Hi there, Dr. Bell here. I'm an author and podcast host of Kingdom Motivation Podcast. I love to share the gospel, so if that's something you want to hear more about, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and stick around. Before we get into the video, thank you for being here. I want to encourage you to connect to my podcast or the weekly blog on madrabell.com. Go to the description box to find out about the free Christian resources that I offer on the website, and also you can find out more details about my work. Stay tuned. Hi guys, Madra here. There is a place mentioned in the Bible called Ziklag. And I think it's a place that many of us can identify with at some point or another in our Christian walk with God. But the thing about this place is that if you stay in it, it could make you miss God. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about it, and it's coming from a story in 1 Samuel. So if you'd like to hear more about this place, stay tuned. So if you want to follow up on this Bible story, make sure you go to 1 Samuel 27th chapter and the 28th chapter to get a little bit more of the background of why I want to talk about this particular place today. Ziklag. When I was in devotion yesterday, this word came into my spirit and I had heard of it before, but I did not remember the particular circumstances that surrounded it. I knew it was a place in the Bible and I knew there was a battle in this particular town. But I prayed about it and I did some research on it. And what I found out really blessed me and I wanted to share it with you. So Ziklag was a place that David stayed in. But let's get a little bit background about why he stayed there for a while. So in the Bible, we know that David served under King Saul for a little while, right? Until Saul became envious and jealous of him. And he got so jealous of David that David had to basically run away from him, right? Before David was appointed as king, we see that he had to actually flee for safety because of David's, because of Saul's envy against him. So David was not thinking straight. He was weary. This situation had gone on for a long time. Like many of us, you can become discouraged and stop thinking straight when some situations that you go through last and linger for a long period of time, right? even when you have faith. So we see that's what happened to David. Even though David was a man of God, he had faith in God, he was anointed and appointed, but he walked through a situation that was so discouraging to him, he felt like his only out was to run to enemy territory. He actually ran to the Philistines. Philistines had a history of being enemies against God's people. Everyone knew it, including David. He had fought against them when he was much younger. Remember when he fought against Goliath in the land of the Philistines? So nothing had changed, but he felt so pressured that he actually ran to this land for safety. The leaders there accommodated David. So they let David move to this place called Ziklag, right? And in time, we read and we find out that Ziklag became a base for David and his men to actually build up their forces or their, their fighting forces there. I looked up the word Ziklag, and it comes from a Hebrew root word that means to press, to mentally press someone or something to reveal what's inside of them. Many men of God have to go to this place. Women of God too, but especially men of God who are called to walk in high places. 
when you learn the ways of God, you see that he will allow you to go to Ziklag. Not to crush you, but to bring you to a certain place. And we're going to get to that in just a little bit here. The word Philistine means to wear down or wallow in self-pity. Interesting. Self-pity. The people, like we were saying, were longtime rivals of God's people. But David ran there. He fled there. And um, he did that because he was in a state of weariness. Envy and jealousy will wear you down. And if you're in a situation where you're under an authority and if you stay past the time, that authority will try to kill you spiritually, emotionally, your career, your calling, whatever. So David fled. He just wanted to get out of the way of King Saul, right? But here's what's interesting. When Saul learned David had moved to the land of the Philistines, he stopped chasing David. Because the devil knows that a hopeless Christian is a defeated Christian. He knows that if you lose your confidence in yourself and in your destiny, that you are no longer a threat to his dominion in a territory. You're not a threat to his kingdom. So he'll back off, right? And that's exactly what happened. Let's go to 1 Samuel 27 and 4. I'm looking at my notes here. So that's where all the noise is coming from. But in 1 Samuel 27 and 4, it says, Saul was told that David had escaped to Gath. Whereupon he, he stopped searching for him. Isn't that something? So Ziklag is a place in the spirit reality that we must visit on the walk with God, especially if you're a man of God, called to serve God in high places. You may find yourself in impossible situations where you can't think straight. You may feel sorry for yourself. You don't see a way out. And you seek refuge in all the wrong people, places, and things, right? You're pressed. You're pressed hard on every side. And in this pressing, you're going to see what's inside of you. You're going to see any destructive thoughts and habits that you have that will cause you to abort your destiny and calling. When you see it, you can identify it. And you can grow. But you can't wallow in the self-pity and you can't give up on yourself and you can't stop hoping because if you stop hoping in this place, you're no longer to a threat. You're no longer a threat to the enemy. And you're off the path from where God is really leading you. God wants you to run out. And when you run out of yourself, meaning that when you run out of solutions, when you can no longer figure out things in your own mind, you can't use your physical strength. You can only go so far. And it's in this place is where you meet God. You truly find out what's inside of you. You truly find out who you are in Christ, apart from the natural gifts, strengths, talents, and abilities that God has placed on the inside of you. Yes, they're good but we can't rely on them. Ultimately, our anointing and our strength, all of that, we have to know that it comes from our Father God. So we have to run out. When we get to Ziklag, that's when we run out. And it's not to crush you or destroy you. It's just so you can be stronger to go to the next level in God, right? Let's look at 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 2 because there were some interesting verses there that we need to look at. So 1 Samuel 30 and 1, three days later when David and his men arrived in Ziklag, they found that their enemies had raided the place, right? They sacked Ziklag and burned it down and they had taken captive the women and everyone there, great and small. They hadn't killed anyone, but they carried them off as they went on their way. So David and his men arrived at the city. There it was, burned down. Their wives, their sons, everything, you know, taken. Then David and the people with him cried aloud, 
until they had no more power to cry. Have you been there? David's two wives have been taken captive from Carmel. Verse 6, David was in serious trouble. The people were talking about stoning him to death because all the people were in such deep grief that each man over his sons and daughters. Here's the part I love. But David encouraged himself in Adonai, his God. When you get to this place, you have to encourage yourself in the Lord because many are going to turn on you. They may have once walked with you and been your greatest cheerleader, but they'll start cheering against you. They'll feel like they want to abort the mission, kill you. And when there's nobody left, you have to encourage yourself in the Lord and allow him to strengthen you in his power and might. There's nowhere else to go, but up or further down. So strengthen yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. In time, Ziklag became a possession of Israel. So what was meant to destroy David actually became David's inheritance. Whatever is crushing you is meant to become a place of praise and victory, just like in this story. You know, Isaiah 40 and 9 tells us to be strengthened in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let's go there. Isaiah 40 and 29 to get this reminder. You know, there's answers in the word of God. I love it. Isaiah 40 and 29 says he invigorates the exhausted, talking about God. He gives strength to the powerless. So if you're feeling defeated and powerless today, if you're wallowing in self-pity, don't stay there. When you run out, it's time to run to God and to be okay with that because he wants to give strength to the powerless. Can you identify with David's state of weariness and confusion? Have you ever been in a situation that lingered so long until you almost gave up? Your hope dried up? Your faith was long gone? God didn't want you to throw in the towel. He wanted to bring you to the place of perfected praise. He's not going to leave you but he wants you to praise him and love him for who he is. He wants you to really get to know who you are in Christ Jesus. So make sure you go back and review this particular passage and let it strengthen you and encourage you today. I'll talk later. God bless.